The most common way of doing spectral analysis is the window and FFT combination. But I always use the filter bank method. I'm Ricardo Lozada, a signal processing developer at MathWorks, and in this video, I'll show you why. First, let's get some terminology out of the way. In the context of spectral analysis, combining a window with an FFT is called a periodogram. Averaging periodograms is referred to as Welch's method. If that was too confusing, don't worry about it. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll just use the filter bank method instead. Now, I will emphasize that whether you're using Welch's method or the filter bank, averaging is important to reduce noise in the spectral estimate. Okay, with terminology out of the way, let's look at the challenges in spectral analysis based on a finite record of data. I'll start by looking at the simplest application of spectral analysis, identifying the frequency of a single sine wave and its power. When we look at a sinusoid's power spectrum, we expect a single line spectrum. The frequency of that line should match the sinusoid's frequency, and the amplitude of the line gives its average power. However, if we take a finite segment of that sinusoid, when we compute the power spectrum using an FFT, we will often get something like this instead. As you can see, that's quite different than what is expected. The peak of the computed spectrum is close to, but not at the right frequency. The peak value is also not quite right. And what's with all these other spectral lines? If this wasn't test data, it would be hard to tell whether these lines are due to actual periodic components or simply artifacts of the computation. So why are we getting all this spectral leakage? To answer that, let's go through the steps we take to compute the spectral estimate. First, when dealing with finite segments, we are implicitly windowing the data with a rectangular window. In the frequency domain, this windowing manifests as a sync function. When the window data is sinusoidal, the sync function is centered at the frequency of that sinusoid. Next, when we compute the FFT, we are effectively sampling the shifted sync function at evenly spaced frequency points. That's the actual power spectrum we are able to compute. The main drawback of a rectangular window is its poor sidelobe attenuation, only about 13 dB. This causes the appearance of large spectral components where none exist in reality. Keep in mind that zero padding in order to compute more FFT points does not solve the problem. In fact, that is what I did to compute the blue line in this plot. The real solution is to have a longer segment length. However, this is not always possible since the data may not be stationary for that long. And anyway, there's a practical limit to the size of the FFTs we can compute. Before moving on, let me mention that there are a few rare cases when things work out nicely. For example, Change the frequency of the sinusoid to one of the FFT frequency points, and the following happens. Now, we are still windowing, so a sync is still involved, but it just so happens that the FFT points are sampling the sync exactly at its peak and at the sync notches. This eliminates spectral leakage completely, but the odds of this happening are low. The traditional way of dealing with spectral leakage is to use a non-rectangular window because it will have a lower silo. Pick your favorite window. It will have a defined amount of silo attenuation. Let's compare using a rectangular window with using another common window, the Blackman-Harris window, and using the filter bank for the single tone we had tried previously. This time we'll use the spectrum analyzer block. To keep things fair, for this and all comparisons, we'll use the same segment length for all analysis methods. So using a non-rectangular window helped a little, but not nearly as much as using the filter bank. When windowing a given segment length, the trade-off for having better silo attenuation is a wider main lobe. While better silo attenuation is good, a wider main lobe is not. Let me show you why was the second test case. We'll use a different window, but similar results hold for all windows. This model shows two tones that are close to each other. We will once again compare the rectangular window with a different window and with the filter bank. Because of the wider main lobe, the hand window does not provide enough resolution to distinguish between the two tones. Only the rectangular window and the filter bank provide the required resolution. In this case, of all windows, a rectangular window is your best choice. Now let's look at a case where it's not. This model shows a simplified 16 QAM communications link. We're using the spectrum analyzer to visualize the received signal. There is very little noise added in the channel as can be seen from the constellation plot. Let's once again compare the three methods. The poor silo attenuation of the rectangular window is evident, and it gives the false impression that a lot of noise was added by the channel. The Kaiser window and the filter bank are both able to adequately compute the received spectrum. 
So, when picking windows, we are left with a compromise between resolution and silo attenuation. But what if you need both? Well, as we just saw, the filter bank method gave good results for all cases. That's why I use it. So how does it work? A filter bank is just a set of bandpass filters, each one centered at a different frequency. The idea mimics how old analog spectrum analyzers work, but instead of a single filter sweeping across the spectrum, the collection of filters covers the entire spectrum simultaneously. Average power is computed for the output of each bandpass filter. Now, we want to do this efficiently in order to compute the spectrum in real time. Here's how. The FFT itself can be viewed as a filter bank, just not a very selective one. We can boost the FFT with a polyphase filter to form what is called an FFT polyphase filter bank, or simply a channelizer. The channelizer will convert this filter bank corresponding to just an FFT into this much more selective filter bank. The channelizer starts with a prototype narrow low-pass filter. The role of the FFT is to efficiently modulate the filter to cover all frequency bands. Let's look at frequency leakage from the filter bank perspective. Start with just the FFT. The filters are centered across different bands and overlap significantly except at the center frequency. This overlap is what causes leakage, since signals at such frequencies get through multiple filters. Only around the center frequencies of the filters, the overlap is minimal and there's minimal leakage. In contrast, with the channelizer, the filters usually overlap each other at the edges, but otherwise have almost no interference with each other. The polarity is reversed. Most frequencies have negligible leakage. Only for the frequencies in the small overlap region there might be leakage, and even then only to a single adjacent filter. Also, the overlap region can be made smaller independent of the signal being analyzed by adding more filter taps to the prototype filter. This means that leakage can be reduced without increasing the segment length. In practice, all this means that the filter bank method gives you the best of both worlds. Resolution of a rectangular window plus FFT combination with almost no spectral leakage. In addition, the filter bank method has other advantages. More stable peaks, more consistent and accurate noise floor. Also, there are other neat things you can do with channelizers. For instance, you can nest them to get different resolutions at different frequency bands. This is done, for instance, in audio spectral analysis. In fairness, the filter bank method isn't perfect. It has a longer transient response because of the filter involved. Other high resolution methods exist, such as parametric methods and eigenvector methods. However, those apply to very specific signals and are not used for general spectral analysis. In most cases, you should do what I do. Set the analysis method to filter bank and forget about it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. You can download the code for the examples below in the description links.